Hello everyone. Good evening. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way and come and chit chat with me. Uh, so you guys, we are going to continue on the Splendid Sampler 2 again this evening. It is a hundred different quilt blocks. We are starting a new block tonight and we are going to tackle uh, Estelle. So this is the Estelle block. I know a lot of you guys have mentioned that you had a little bit of trouble on this one. So I thought, you know, we're working on pieced blocks for a little while and uh, this one came up and I thought I'd give it a go. So, all right, so you guys will have to uh, support me through it. <laughs> so hopefully it goes okay. Uh, so we're gonna start on that. But I wanted to also share, I did not do any embroidery this weekend, like I said I was going to, but instead I cut a whole pile more leaders. So look, here are all uh, those leaders that we cut all the half square triangles from on Friday. So I did cut a pile more and I sewed together a lot of the leaders uh, into groups of 25. So I did rows of, uh, rows of five and five columns, and I was able to get uh, three three of these done. So these are just from from the leaders that we've we've been making, which is just crazy. So we're making this out of nothing right now. I mean, these are made out of clothing, first of all, just like clothing that we're throwing away, and um, there are leaders, which is just where we start and stop. Our, uh, our sewing on the sewing machine. Instead of leaving a bunch of strings, we just sew it onto a little piece of fabric. But instead of any old piece of fabric, we've been sewing it onto actual actual uh, squares so we can magically, magically make a quilt. So I just crazed at like how uh, many of these were made. So I almost have enough for a whole nother one. I think I had 92 squares total and I needed 100. So actually, from sewing these together using new leaders for this, I probably have enough now for a whole nother one. So we'll have to do another one of those, but we're gonna have like a magic quilt here. It's just crazy. So, all right, I'm gonna, I had to show you guys those. Uh, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get started tonight. Yeah, it's a lot of cutting. I just, uh, uh, Sharla, I just, I put on, uh, some TV shows and uh, um, all Saturday evening I just cut look at I got this weird Hawaiian shirt in here so I already have a few a few done so the Hawaiian shirt it's so flexible this one's gonna be a really difficult fabric but it was too cute so I left it in uh, but yeah so we're gonna have a whole pile more and like I said I, I almost have enough for a whole nother one of those blocks uh, I'm gonna just hook this back up onto my little area where I where I'm storing my leaders so I can just I can just grab grab them as we sew but here oh I did not use my cutting glove Gretchen but um, <laughs> but I saw another person slice through their finger on Facebook so now I'm I think I'm gonna get my cutting gloves out again but check this out, like we're gonna have a total quilt here. So I'm, I'm just so excited about these. And I did, not, I did not put these in any order, I just, I just grabbed. Um, so that's why, you know, that's why it's kind of all, it's all in different directions, or I mean, it's all different fabrics all mixed together. So as I go along, it'll get even more weird because, um, you know, I'm starting new shirts and stuff. That I'm that I'm cutting up, but anyway, I'm so happy with this, and I love the look of just uh, first of all, just the old shirts. I think it looks really like comforting, <laughs> and just the half square triangles all in the same direction. I think it's just kind of like this neat, kind of striking design, just the lights and darks together. So I'm digging that. Okay, you guys, back to business here. 
<laughs> the magic quilt. Glennis, I think that's what I'm going to call it. It's the magic quilt. It is literally just happening from um, nothing. Um, oh, and you guys, oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, I have them here. So, oh, no, I don't. So I liked the, uh, um, oh, God, I forgot the name of, of it again. That piecing tool, the um, the triangle one where you can do the dog ears out of the clearly perfect. Oh, I don't have it by me because remember it was, it broke. So I have to return it. So it's on my desk getting ready to return. But I think I like that one better. I think it slid a little bit less than the block lock did. And oh, I did do a timing. I timed it over the weekend, you guys. So uh, to cut out a stack of 10, which made which made 20 of these half square triangles, I did, uh, um, it took me with the, the pieced, the, um, the perfectly pieced, gosh, what is that called, you guys? That, that one with the triangle and the dog ears. I, I, I keep forgetting what that one was called. Uh, yeah, that ruler. That, um, that one took 17 minutes for me to do the stack of 10, which yielded 20. And for the block lock ruler, it took me um, like 22 minutes. So it was faster. And I felt like it was a lot less pressure on my hands, like pushing down on, on the, um, the block lock felt like a little more, more on my hands and wrists and stuff. However, I do think the block lock is going to get the best accuracy because you're pressing it first and then cutting it out. So if you guys don't know, oh yes, there it is. The clearly perfect slotted trimmers. Thanks, Shirley. That's a, it's a mouthful. So I keep forgetting. Oh, I linked in the videos. I don't think I linked them in this one, but Gretchen, if you go look at my last video, I do have links in there uh, for it. But yeah, so right now I like the, the slotted trimmers uh, better, but if I, if I need to be like super accurate, um, I think the block lock ruler and you know, the slotted trimmer is cheaper and you can do a whole pile of different blocks with it too. So I don't know. That's my winner right now, I think. <laughs> uh, and like I said, I, I'm, oh, surely you got yours. That's awesome. So you'll have to let us know how it went for you, but uh, I, I have to return mine because that one broke, but I'm definitely, I'm going to reorder. Oh, you did see mine break. Yep. Gretchen, that's the video that I have the post. So I'm super bummed about that. All right. Anyway, here's the Estelle block. It's by Joyce uh, Beans. And uh, it says, my mom Estelle taught and encouraged me to sew and because of her dedication, I'm living my best quilting life. I teach classes at Thimble's Quilt Shop in Lockport, Illinois, and my favorite classes are beginning quilting and kids sewing. The enthusiasm of newcomers is contagious. And that's from Joyce. So this is Estelle on, uh, um, and it's on page, page 40. So that's what we're going to attack today. Uh, so let's start with some fabrics and you know what, this is one of those blocks that I think I'm going to cut and piece as I go, because I just feel like if I cut everything first, I'm going to end up with a pile of confusion for myself. Like sometimes I just feel like, ah, oh, it's too much to keep organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut enough for like this first part where it looks like we're making these little squares, uh, these little four patches, and then I'm going to work my way from there. So, uh, um, and I'll probably try and mimic these colors as best I can. I mean, obviously I'm doing a very light, like blonde quilt, but I'll start with um, a white and tan. And then maybe we'll do like the brighter yellows and stuff for everything else. But I'm going to keep this color white and this color tan. Um, so, and I know kind of what ones I'm doing for that. Cause I, I looked ahead. I need a um, 11 inch strip out of that. And there's not many of my fabrics that I have an 11 inch area anymore on. So we're going to use the white. Oh, this black was a, a nightmare. Make sure your seams are scant. Oh, we'll do, Noeline. Um, all right. And I'm, oops, geez, sorry. I just punched you guys there. Um, I'm going to use, I think, um, just this one with the circles on that we've been using, this tan for the tan. 
So that's almost, you know, totally mimicking what they have here. And it's mostly because I'm going to use white for the bulk of a lot of these blocks. So I'll just keep with where they have the white here. And the tan, I ha this tan I have a lot of, like I said, I have... I'm running it super low. Like all these are itty bitty baby pieces now. Um, except for like some of some of these uh, here, the swirls we have a lot, and the, those dots we have a lot, and the white we have a lot. So we're gonna have to start focusing on those fabrics, I think, and um, you know, use everything else a little bit more sparingly. So we're gonna start with cutting these and then doing this first step right away. Okay, so sew the A and C strips. Okay, those are my 11 inch pieces together to make strip sets. Okay, so we're doing, this is kind of a neat way of piecing where you just sew strips together and then you cross cut them and then you have sewn together pieces already. So I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about that. I don't do that very often. It's a technique that I'd like to use more because it's economical. Um, in you know movement and and fabric and thinking it's kind of magic you know it's all just pieced together for us so we need a strip they both both of these strips are one and a quarter inch by 11 inches so let's start there all right i'm going to actually start by pressing here i'm going to get a little lower you got ears done pretty straight seams oh you turned two of the pin wheel blocks the wrong way oh <laughs> That adds to, adds to it. All right, first of all, I'm gonna see, um, I cleaned up here, so all my rulers are all of a sudden put away and sort of flung out all over the place, so I gotta find them. All right, this is not quite 11 inches here. So we're gonna go this long way, which should be at least 18 inches. Yeah, 18 inches. Um, probably fold this in half and do it. So I'm, I'm gonna press all the way around that edge, along that edge. And then I also need to press and cut this as well. You guys, it was so relaxing this weekend, just sewing those little squares together, those little half square triangles, the magic half square triangles. It just was really relaxing. And I did that webbing technique of pre of sewing them together so I didn't even have to think about where they were going to go because they just all stayed together. It was just, I had good music on. Ugh, it was nice. It was a good weekend of sewing. All right, this looks like it could be 11 inches here. Let's just do a quick check. Yeah, for sure. Again, we'll just cut a strip and just have the little extra just to make it easy on us. You've been bringing you up on YouTube for the past few weeks. Oh, that's cool. All right, um, let's see. Oh, you're through all the free motioning. Oh, I make it look easy. Well, I um, if you check out Renee, I did um, the, uh, that charming chevrons quilt, that was kind of the first time I really dug into free motion quilting. So it's because of that project that I that I learned a lot. So if I look if I look like I'm doing a good job now, it's totally because um, <laughs> because I worked on it on that project. Oh, Bonnie, thanks. Yes. So if you guys got, I sent a newsletter out today. And um, I mentioned in there that it is, it's my brother Justin's birthday today. So happy birthday, Justin. And uh, um, it's birthday. So I mentioned that it's birthday week, basically, for my family. So it was my brother Jared's birthday on the 4th. And it is my mom's birthday on Wednesday. So birthday week week basically <laughs> all right i'm gonna just get a little higher so you guys can see so i'm just going to uh, start out by just trimming 
trimming this edge down. So we got start right out with a straight edge on both of these. So I have four layers of fabric here right now because I'm trying to cut these strips at the same time. Oh, and we just talked about the cutting glove. So you know what? I'm going to get that out too. We'll, we'll do the cutting glove a little bit more. So this is actually, um, it's not technically for quilting, but it's like for using other tools and that sort of thing. I got it on Amazon. I don't, I'm not sure I have them have it on my post here because um, I forgot that I was going to try using them. They are a little bit long. I have a horrible time trying to find gloves. This is actually what I use for my free motion quilting too, what I've been using, but they're technically cutting gloves, which means it has, I don't know, some sort of extra thread worn in or woven, knit into it so that, um, so that like, I don't know, it's cut proof or something. So I'm going to wear them today because I saw, like I said, another person on Facebook uh, today, you know, with their hand all bandaged up, going to the emergency room because she sliced through her hand, ah, which freaks me out. Like that is like a huge fear of mine. And I see that all the time. I mean, I follow a lot of quilting things on, on Facebook, but, uh, you know, just people slicing through fingers and hands. I mean, all you have to do is like get a finger over a little too far, right? Yeah, like a Kevlar. So I don't know, freaks me out. Let's test this again. All right, so I'm doing the double ruler method just because I didn't want to move this fabric because I got those four nice edges that I don't want to mess up. So I'm measuring one and uh, a quarter. Jeez, that's small. So this is a block. I think we're gonna have to pay special attention. Oh gosh, I didn't, it's time to switch the blade. If I cannot go through four layers of fabric, that's, that's no good. So I'm actually gonna set this aside. I have another rotary cutter here. Let's, let's hope that that's been changed more recently. It looks pretty dirty too. <laughs> uh, I'll have to, um, I have some more blades. I'll have to break those out and, and switch, the, switch the blades. Okay, uh, all right, so now we need these to be 11 inches. So I'm gonna just lay them out. Let's rotate this guy. All right. So there's one. That's true. I did I did cut a lot this week, and you're right, and that makes sense. I'm like, wow, this is a lot duller than I remember, but you're right. I did um, I cut a lot this weekend, and you know I haven't changed the blade in a while in general. All right, I'm gonna get get this guy out. I like this this um this ruler. So I'm going to get the glove on again. That's going to be the practice. Can I just get into the habit of putting the glove on and off? That'll be interesting. Oh yeah, this feels a bit sharper, so that's good. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's do the double ruler method again. I don't want to move this. So let's Yep, Becky, we're we're tackling that. We're tackling it now. All right, so I'm going to do the ruler like this. Square it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just checking, checking the measurements on the instructions. It says eleven. All right, this is what we want. I would like to hope that they put a little bit extra on here, but I don't know for sure, so I'm gonna be super accurate with my 11. Ooh, this feels slippery all of a sudden. Wow, yeah, weird. It's probably time to 
bet you I can wash these gloves too. But wow, yeah, it feels... Huh, on this ruler specifically, it feels a little slippery, this glove. But, ugh, as long as it doesn't chop my fingers off. Okay. Let's see what we got now. All right, we'll keep this little extra on the side. Um, okay, so we are going to sew these two together. I'm looking at the diagram and it looks like we sew them like this. Sew the A and C strips together to make a strip set. Press, we're pressing towards this tan color. Uh, and then cut strips into eight one and a quarter wide segments. All right, we can do it. Let's uh, get down to the sewing machine. Okay, there we are. I got a leader on there already. Okay, right sides together. Haha, <laughs> we did not talk about Easter candy yet, Gretchen. I did have some peeps already, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that <laughs> stays there with, and I don't have any more. Some post Easter candy sometimes sneaks into the office though. So we are just sewing this strip together. This is what's going to end up being uh, um, some of, uh, like, this is what's going to end up being a, a whole group of four patches, which are just two rows of two. So four, four little squares. All right, let's get another leader out. So here's my new stack of leaders. I pressed a hole. Actually, I didn't press any of these. Um, so they're all, I cut a whole bunch more, but I got lazy and didn't, didn't get the iron out. So they're all wonky, but I figure who cares? We're gonna cut them down. The whole thing's wonky. All right, the accuracy will come once we trim them, trim them down later. Oh yeah, it's so funny. I put everything away and so everything's, um, I'm used to having like my scissors right here, but I hung it up again. It's just funny. Funny what happens when you clean. All right, um, let's go to the ironing board, ironing mat. You, I have not toasted peeps like toasted marshmallows. <laughs> huh, this looks almost bunchy. I wonder if it's time to change my needle again. I don't know. I've been having weird issues lately, I think, with tension. Well, we're going to deal. We'll deal with it today, but maybe before tomorrow, since this block really depends on... Um, precision maybe before tomorrow I'll change the um, the needle and just rethread everything so I'm pressing it towards the tan piece so this is probably a block that I will measure each unit as I make it see how accurate we are along the way Ugh, do I really want to do that though? That means that if it's wrong, I would take it out and re-sew it. And <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll see how persnickety I get with, with this one. Okay. I'm gonna just press it from this side one more time. Make sure we're as flat as we can get here. That's just going to help with our cutting accuracy. All right. So we need eight 
one and a quarter inch wide segments. So eight, so that is eight inches, nine, 10. Okay, so we do have, we do have a one inch leeway on here. So that's, that's good news, um, which means that I am going to give this a little trim so we start out um, more accurate. All right, let's get the glove back on and I'll trim it with this ruler. This is the ruler that I like the best. It's the most comfortable and I just like it. All right, so I'm trimming so I have a perfect edge on that side. And now instead of doing the double ruler, since I don't have any fabric hanging over, I'm gonna just rotate my whole mat here. Um, so I can just, uh, cut, you know, with my um, right hand still. So one and a quarter. Okay, one and a quarter. I like how this ruler, um, I can line things up best. So I'm already noticing, so this might come into play later, but um, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. This is a, these are one and a quarter. So we lost, we lost the quarter though from the seam allowance. So now these should be like perfectly one inch and I can already tell, um, I'm, I got a hair over on this side and a hair over on this side. So I, uh, um, might be stitching my, my, um, seems a little too scant because I have a little too much extra, just a hair but I have just a hair extra on each side. So on a block like this, that might cause a uh, trouble as we go along. I mean, it, it's, it is pretty close, so hopefully it's not that big of a deal, but it's something that I'm gonna have in the back of my head since this, this block will be quite a bit about accuracy. So what I'm doing, I'm actually um, putting measuring along with this center line. I'm, I'm putting that like number four through there and then I'm just, you know, making sure everything else is lined up, but that's how I can notice already that I'm a little over. So we're gonna cut slower, we're gonna measure slower, we're just gonna get a bit more accurate um, than usual. <laughs> Usually I'm just like, yeah, it's good enough, I like it. It's almost the right size. That's kind of how I go about a lot of my projects, just cause, you know, I don't know. I should practice more accuracy like this though, probably something to get better at. All right, you guys are in my way. You're gonna go over there. And uh, since it sounds like um, several people were dealing with that in this block specifically, that's a good warning to me to start out a little bit cleaner, a little bit um, slower, more accurate if I can. And don't cut through my finger. All right, that was five, I think this is six. All right, now I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that was only five. So I need three more out of here. It actually looks like my tan is getting a little bit smaller. Oh, actually now it, it looks right. Ooh, did I do that last one? No, one and a quarter. I almost cut that one to one inch, but I need one and a quarter. Ooh, I better check those other ones. Hopefully I didn't mess this up already. <laughs> Uh, it could happen, I suppose. I think they all look the same size, though. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't mess it up yet. It was close. Close, close. One more. All right. 
Not quite an inch extra, just a hair extra. All right, there are our pieces. I believe next up, sew two segments together as shown to make a four patch unit. The unit should measure two inches square. So, all right, we are taking sets of these and I'm gonna just put them together right away. I'm gonna lay them out how it is in the book with the white up. So we're doing like a little grid here. Four of them. And because we're, you know, because we cut this in a strip and pressed it the same direction, by rotating one, um, that's going to make our seam allowances go in opposite directions, which is going to allow us to nest our seams, and that's what's going to get our good, accurate points. Um, I could clip these, but I think I'm going to just do it by feel because these pieces are so small but I suppose we have four chances so let's let's see how the first one goes how it feels and um, then we'll decide so all right we're going like this I'm folding it over and here are the seams so they're both going in opposite directions which makes that little bump there and the bump is on the opposite side here those bumps are gonna hit and uh, uh, so that's what we want we want to hold those two bumps together and align our edge. And you know what? I changed my mind. We are going to throw a clip in here. I can already tell that I'm probably not going to be able to hold this together. So we're just going to go like that. Make sure our edges are aligned. And we're going to sew that guy. All right. Still attempting accuracy here. First of all, let's take my shoe off. I can't sew with my shoes on. There we go. All right, so now that I got it started, I'm just gonna kinda line up this bottom edge too a little bit better. All right, there we go. Remove that clip. And here's the trick too, keeping on sewing straight. That's not always easy for me either. All right. So that guy's done. Uh, let's uh, get the next one. Again, we want those seams to butt up against each other. Flip it around so the seam, oh, help, so it's like this way. So the seam is facing the machine to help. So like, Well, no matter which way I flip it, it's pointing away, though. I don't know. You're a barefoot sewer, too. Yeah, I just feel... I never realized it until we started talking about it here. I'm like, oh, yeah, I suppose I do like sewing without, um, without shoes on best. It's just because I feel like I can control um, control the uh, foot pedal a bit more. Like the start and stop of it all. Okay. Yeah, and my bobbin thread is coming up kind of funny. I don't know if you saw that. It comes up, came up in a little loop there. I suspect it's time to re-thread everything, and I got to wind some more bobbins and stuff, too. It's time. I'll have to take time to do that tomorrow. Something's not right, so it's time to clean and start fresh again. Clean the machine, re-thread the bobbin, re-thread the top thread, and um, oil it a little bit. See if that helps. 
get my another another leader ready. This one's, I got a whole stack of this weird Hawaiian floral, but it is so flexible, so it's, it's actually been pretty hard to work with. We'll see how it sews into the quilt later. Um, luckily, I think this my white piece with these green dots. I think it's a flannel, so it, everything it, like these really flimsy fabrics are sticking to it really well. So that's helpful. All right, let's see how we did on these little four patches. All right, we're gonna press these. What did it, how did it say to press these? Oh, we just pressed to one side. Let's just peek on our accuracy. accuracy. Leslie, we are working on the Estelle block. Oh, there we go. That is accurate. There we go. That's that's what the nesting the seams will get, where these both of these lines just um, line up just perfectly. Um, so that's what we're going for. Let's see how we did on the rest of these. Oh, looking good. All right, three for four. It is, Gina, um, the, um, oh gosh, the NCAA basketball stuff. Is that even what it's called? I'm horrible. <laughs> I just, I could care less about college basketball. I'm sorry to everyone, but yes, it is in, it is in the town. And, uh, and I guess they did, um, Nicolette Mall, um, which is a, a, a downtown, um, Hold on a sec, let's see. Press. Oh, weird, I think I already screwed this up, you guys. Yep, I already screwed this up, just from the seam allowance pressing. So, oh well, hopefully um, it's not the end of the world. So I did, I did do this, I did do this backwards, so I'm, I was supposed to, so I laid all these out like this, but I think I was supposed to lay them out. I laid them out horizontally and I was supposed to lay them out vertically because now I'm supposed to press the seam allowance to the right. Um, but now my things are in the wrong spot. Like I need them this way. So I'm gonna just hope that that doesn't matter <laughs> and I'm gonna just press to one, one direction on these. So, oh well. <laughs> It happens, I suppose. I'm gonna just face these all in the same direction and we're just gonna to press to one. You totally ignore March Madness too. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I didn't watch any of it. I was gonna watch a little bit here cause I kinda like when they show Minneapolis stuff on TV. It's just kinda fun. Um, but I didn't. <laughs> I listened to music and sewed instead. Oh, how wintry does it get here? Well, we're supposed to have snow on Wednesday and Thursday again, which is just totally disgusting me. Uh, <laughs> it's really bumming me out. It's kind of that's kind of what I talked about in in uh in my newsletter today. Like today, it was just beautiful. Like it almost reached seventy. Like we are almost almost at. The amazing 70 degrees today, except for it was so windy outside. Oh, Joyce, thank you so much for joining us. This is Joyce's block uh, that we're working on here tonight. But yeah, it was, it's just, it was so beautiful, but it was so windy that you couldn't really enjoy it much. Um, uh, and then it's gonna snow. I really hope that they're overstating that because I'm gonna cry if we have snow on Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> I'm ready for the 75 degree weather. Um, let it happen, people. <laughs> uh, gosh, yeah, I'm getting super bummed out actually talking about it. Uh, all right. Let's see what we got. We got these perfect little four patches. I did do that seam allowance, like I sewed them um, 
together the wrong way, but I'm hoping it's not going to matter much. I'm hoping that like the seam, what direction it was in, isn't going to matter. So we have our four things here, and you know what? That was that was the first step I was trying to do. So I did not cut out fabric uh, beyond that. So let's let's see what happens next. Okay, yep, so we're done with those. Oh, let's measure them. First of all, let's measure to see if they were two inches. Um, I don't have a two inch square, so we're gonna just, we're gonna measure here. Because remember, I was gonna measure each unit this time around, and they look pretty dang good. Ooh, uh, here, let's go on this side. All right, yeah, that's looking good. I don't think I'm gonna. Tr I could tr shave it just a hair, but I think I think we're pretty accurate. We're pretty good. But like I said, I'm just a tiny hair over, so I think my seam allowance is just a touch, touch, touch too scant, but not enough that I'm gonna change. I think it's just I'm just gonna keep it on my brain to not let it get not let it get um, too far over my s when I put in the machine. Yeah, there too, I could just shave this one. I think I will. This one I'm gonna shave. Top to bottom, I'm at two inches, but yeah, like I'm literally just shaving a teeny hair off of there. I don't know if I don't know if I needed to do that, but we'll we'll see, I suppose. And this one I could shave as well. So it was when I sewed the strip together that I was a little too scant, but when I sewed the four patch together, that one, that seam is good. All right, another little hairs. Okay. Moving on, we have the first uh, first step done here, our first little bit. So now, <laughs> like I said, I'm cutting and sewing at the same time just to keep my brain intact for, for this one. So we have not cut out the next section, but we can check the check this whole column off. So all right, let's let's move on. Okay, referring, I'm gonna read the instructions first, and then I'm gonna see what we have to cut for it. Uh, but all right. It looks like we're still working with that tan and white, um, which is great. Let's use up all those first. Okay, referring to the triangle squares on page 137, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of all the B, so those are eight squares, and of the D, and four of the E. Okay, so we have three things here that are all one and three quarter, okay. We can cut all those at once. Okay, place a um, B square mark right on. Uh, R mark D square, sew and cut, press, make four half square triangle units. Okay, so it looks like we're doing that same half square triangle thing that we're doing with our leaders where we draw a diagonal and sew on either side. I'm just gonna double check um, the, the triangle square on 137. I'm just gonna double check that I'm reading that correctly. Yep, triangle square. Yep, that's where we draw the diagonal, sew on either side of the diagonal, and cut it and get, get two out of it. So, ooh, we could get the, the block lock ruler out again. Trim units to one and a quarter. I think I have an itty bitty. We could try the we could try the baby block lock. Oh, I think this is one and a half though, but I think if I do it, well, yeah, this is what I'm gonna have to try with the block lock. Um, otherwise, I'll have to, I'll grab the, um, that other one that we like, the slatted ruler. But first of all, let's cut pieces. That's going to take a little time. So we need the D, the B, D, and E squares. So we need to make a pile of squares. But first, that means we have to choose another fabric. Right now we have the uh, um, white and the tan. So we're going to continue with that. Uh, so this will be like our oops, our little like pinwheels and these little half square triangles there too. It looks like, yeah, somewhere I don't know. We'll see. And then we need E. 
which is the red print. Okay, so we let's it's time to pick our other colors out here. So we have these. What do we think will look right with this? So immediately I'm noticing how contrasty these blues and reds are to the inside. So I think I want to use something as contrast as we can. And what's jumping out at me right away is this bright, crazy yellow. I mean, that that pops against, I mean, as much as my fabrics can pop, again, remember I'm using those really pale uh, yellows and tans. So our contrast is going to be pretty low contrast compared to like these high contrast where it's, you know, a larger distance between light and dark than mine. Mine are going to be a closer distance between light and dark. So I think this one, why don't we just declare this our red? Um, but then I need something else. So something that contrasts that. I'm wondering, does this blend in too much, do you think? This would be our blue background. Then we'd have pops of these yellows. I think maybe that's too close. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. We could do something like this floral. But again, we got this tan on the inside, and I kind of wanted to contrast that. Maybe that. I don't know. We don't have a ton of contrast here, but I think, or this could be our bigger one, and then our red could be, like this could be in the corner. I think the other way, let's, let's call this red, and let's just, I'm just gonna decide. We're gonna make this the other color. Let's call this um, the blue. I think I have a little bit more of that hanging out here. Oh, otherwise we do have this darker color, but again, it's that tan. I think that blends too much. This is more of that light pale, that light yellow kind of color, and I think that's going to work better for us. Okay, decision done. Moving on. <laughs> At some point, you just got to choose, right? All right, so this is going to be our red. This is going to be our blue. All right, next up. So we need out of the red, which is our yellow. <laughs> um, we need eight, one, and three. Oh gosh, can, do I even have that? That is a good question. Oh yeah, I must. Okay, good. So eight, one, and three quarters, four, one, and three quarters, and eight. So the cream, oh wait, cream and tan. This must be tan. So the The red and the cream, which is our white. These two I need eight. This one I need four. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. It's math o'clock does not work. Okay. And uh, I may not be able to layer all these because again, I'm at that point in my quilt where I have such oddball shapes, but actually these two are the ones that I need eight out of. All right, so what would that be? Uh, so one, two, uh, all right, let's see. Well, eight inches for sure. I think we're gonna just have to cut strips and see where we're at. I think this one I can go this way. I think we'll fold this. Just do it like that. All right, we're going to press just to make these a little bit nicer. Yeah, we're using these beat up pieces that we've used for all the rest of the quilt. So it's not as easy to do our little pressed. Ooh, I got a little stain on this one. Good thing I'm going to um, have ex extra of this white, I think. Okay, what would four of these be? It would be four inches, five and a half. Six, seven, eight, is it? 
Oh gosh, you guys, I cannot do math at all. Uh, we're going to have to just see how it goes. All right. We're going to have to count as we go. I'm telling you guys, the swimming. I've been swimming. Um, I swam all last week, and I swam today. It's, it's my new thing. I'm trying to get a habit going. We got Y passes, and I've been trying to go every day during the week and swim. And I'm telling you, it is sucks all the thinking out of my brain. <laughs> so then come our little scopes here. Uh, nothing's left anymore. Or a little uh, Facebook Lives. I'm still used to calling them scopes. That was when we were back on, on Periscope. So I'm just getting myself a nice clean edge here again. Ugh. All right, I'm glad we had one blade that was sharp. All right, I'm going to do that um, double ruler method again. Let's see, what do we need? We need one and three quarters. So you guys, I'm going to literally count. This is so horrible and math people are going to cringe, but I'm going to literally count. So this is... Uh, one, two, three, four. So we can get four with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven inches gets us four. Does that make sense? So do we need 14 inches worth? Will that get us uh, eight? <laughs> uh. Let's hope so, because I have... Oh, I'm going to have to cut a little bit more of this yellow, because I only have 13. You think 14? Okay, Libby, I hope that's right. But I'm, I'm still going to be shy, so I'm going to have to cut one more of this yellow out of somewhere, which, which kind of sucks, but oh well. It'd be nice to... We'll have enough of this white, though, that's, that's for sure. All right, again, I'm going to go for some accuracy here. So one and three quarters... Yeah, we're gonna be like an inch shy on inch shy on the yellow. So we'll have to cut more of that. All right. But we should have enough of this white. So I'm gonna shush that away. And you know what? I think before cutting this, I think I'm gonna get that other piece. Um, we need that, that one other fabric cut. But first of all, let's just cut what I need out of here. This is gonna, yeah. I think, I'll, I think I'm gonna press one of these little areas over here just so I'm not messing up a nice straight edge there. So let's just give that a quick press. Get our one extra piece out of here. I'm going to just scooch these to the side because I want to stack them all at once. So, all right, hopefully that was stale. Good. And uh, one and three quarters. And this is looking pretty square there, so I'm going to just chunk it out of there. Ruler! Oh my gosh. Again, I'm totally amazed at how I can lose things without moving from my immediate area. <laughs> oh, here it is. It's hiding underneath my other rulers. All right. <laughs> it must be a gift being able to lose things in the exact spot where you are. Okay, one and three quarters. So we are just basically fussy cutting this one and three quarters square out of here. My God, these are gonna be the tiniest little half square triangles. Gosh, how are you gonna even press them open? All right, there's one, <laughs> one. We need uh, our 13 more. 
Okay, but first, like I said, I wanted to get um, the four. We need four out of this fabric. So that's seven inches if we needed, if it took 14 inches to do eight. So there's the math. <laughs> All right, do I have a good seven inch area out of here? Let's see, what's this right here? I'm trying to, oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. So I can get it out of this weird little area here. I don't have to cut a, a big long thing. You know, I, yeah, ruler caddy. So I, I do, I, I hang, I have um, an area to hang all the rulers, but when I'm in like this tiny workspace here, I just kind of shush them out of the way. And out of the way is like one foot, like a one foot moon radius here. And I, and I just still <laughs> can lose stuff. It is just freaking ridiculous. All right. Have been getting some use out of this cutting glove though tonight, so I'm I'm feeling good about uh, using it. Okay, getting a nice uh, clean edge to start out, and then the one and three quarters again. We're gonna double ruler this one, just because I have all this fabric hanging here. It's gonna be harder to move all that fabric than it is just to do the double ruler. All right, one and scooch a little. There we go. One and three quarters. Lift that guy up. Okay, now we have all our bits to cross cut. So let's get all this big old fabric out of our way. And uh, um, so I need four out of here and I need, well, eight out of this white and seven out of this yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just line up the edges cause we'll, we'll trim. I'm gonna put that one on top cause it's the smallest. I'm gonna actually leave, leave this folded. I think that will work well for us. And here we go. I'm using my ruler edge to line it up and I'm going to trim trim all these edges on this side and then we'll get cross cutting but I'm glad we cut all these out because I can do it all at once. Ooh, now that I'm seeing these three colors just like this together I'm really liking it so I'm, I'm happy we picked those um, and then we just have that one other color. All right, I'm getting my favorite ruler out, my six and a half inch, six and a half inch guy. I'm gonna just shimmy you guys down a little bit here. Okay. That was a little shaky there. So we're all lined up. Let's trim our edge first. We are taking our time on this, but I think our accuracy, um, because we're taking our time, is, is going to pay off. So I'm pretty excited to see how accurate we can get with this block. All right. Let's double check. One and three quarters. Yeah. One and three quarters. Okay, great. One, three quarters. There we go. Trying to find the right lines. Oh yeah, this is quite quite a few layers. It's feeling like a lot of layers. So again, feeling like it's time to change the blade. One and three quarters. Get two. Oop, that's two. We need one and three quarter. All right. Three. And four, and this fourth one should take care of 
our white piece as well because our white piece is doubled up and we only need eight. So I'm going to just remove both of those. And then we just need three more out of this piece because we got our we got our one here. So four, five, and then six, seven, eight we need from here. All right, so ooh, got them. Getting them all cut, that feels good. See what I mean? I mean, there's so many little squares uh, around and they're all just slightly different sizes. So that's why I just decided to um, do step one, cut the things for step one and sew step one and then cut the things for step two and sew step two. Then I don't have all these little pieces hanging around. I kind of don't trust myself with them at, at this time of night. So <laughs> uh, we're doing it uh, piece by piece here. So, all right, let's, let's uh, gather these though. So we have four of those, one, okay, two white, We'll just go this way. Two, three, four. Okay, these are our D pieces. All right, two, four, six, eight. These are our B pieces. So B. D, and these are our E pieces. So five, six, seven, eight. All right, we are ready. Okay, so now we are going to pair these together. And like I said, we're doing the same thing that we're doing with my leaders. So we're, we're gonna draw a line down the middle. And you know what? I think I will actually draw that line. I'm not gonna fold it like how I usually do to, to mark it. I'm gonna take a pencil and actually draw and then we're gonna sew our quarter inch on either side of the diagonal. So we have two seams. We will snip those in half and then we will have uh, two half square triangles, you know, one made from, from each side. But ours are gonna be tiny, itty bitty, micro baby ones. <laughs> so I think, uh, how are we doing? on time yet. Oh, you guys, it is super late already. It's 930. So you know what? I think this is probably a great place to stop because the sewing and trimming of these is going to take some time and be a little bit of a project. So this is what we're going to do next. We're going to pair these up and we're going to make these baby uh, one and a quarter inch uh, half square triangles, which are used all over this. It's used for pinwheels. We got this pinwheel in the center. We got these little bits here. Um, they're just everywhere, right? So that's that's uh, that's what's up next. I think we did all of them. Did we need a blue one? Did we miss one on here? Place, hold on. Place the marked B. Repeat steps four with the four marked B squares. B squares. G squares. Okay, so we we could have actually cut out the G squares as well. So we have um we have our navy print there. So um, we'll start there tomorrow. We will um we'll finish cutting. So we'll cut those G the G squares out. Um, I was just reading ahead to this step, but if we read this whole thing, I need those G squares too. So we'll cut up those. That's that's uh that's this fabric that we haven't used yet. Um, so we'll we'll cut a pile of those and then we will spend some time matching these all up so they're right, you know, to make sure that we got the right amount of these and the right amount of these and the right amount of these all uh, miss like all the matching because that's going to take a little bit of time. And then we will draw on the backs and we will sew, we will do our half square triangle units and uh, I'm, I think I'll get my little, my seam that, uh, the, the slotted uh, ruler out. Um, yeah, I was going to return that, but we'll see. We'll use, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll get the slotted ruler out. I won't return it tonight. I'll return it after we use it tomorrow. And we'll just work on these half square triangle units. I suspect this is going to take the entire time um, tomorrow. But really, 
once we finish those, I mean, that's the bulk of our, of our piece here. I mean, there's a little bit of some border pieces, it looks like, but you know, the bulk is making those half square triangles and then sewing them together into these little like pinwheel units. Um, so we'll be able to finish like this whole center area, uh, you know, relatively quickly after, after doing this. So, all right, that is the plan. That's a good place to start tomorrow. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it an evening, you guys. All right, yep, this is definitely the, the place to stop because we would have not got, we would not have gotten very far, <laughs> I think on these, especially uh, that we have to cut out another square, but check out how small these are. So these are just itty bitty baby uh, four patches. <laughs> Uh, so it'll be fun. I think sewing these together, we'll have like all these little itty bitty bitties. And you know, on this block, these aren't even the smallest pieces on some of these blocks. So this is a good practice. This is definitely good practice and accuracy. Um, definitely measure each unit, like this four patch unit, we measured this to make sure it was two inches. Measure just to make sure. Um, and I even trimmed a little hair off. Uh, just to get it even more accurate and uh, use it as a tool, I think, to address your seam allowance. Like, do you need to add more or get rid of it? Um, along the way, it's a good, good time to practice that um, if you're spending time on accuracy and stuff like we are for this one. So awesome, you guys. Thank you again. Um, make sure to check your emails. I did send an email out today with a little special for newsletter subscribers. So check that out. And uh, um, again, happy birthday, Justin. Happy birthday, Jared. And <laughs> almost happy birthday to my mom on, uh, on Wednesday. So <laughs> I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. And uh, I'll be here again on Facebook uh, on Penguin and Fish, the Penguin and Fish page uh, tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central. Good night. <laughs>